Swim Swam Podcasts coming at you with the new head coach of Auburn University, Ryan Wakamurka, joining us from, do you call it the Plains? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Auburn, the Plains, yep. Got it. It's, okay. it's the loveliest little village on the Plains, so yes, sir. Because it is such a like great athletic uh, history there at Auburn. Who is the most famous alum to reach out and congratulate you? I could do a multiple choice because A, Bo Jackson, B, Charles Barkley, or C, Rowdy Gaines. Yeah, I um, haven't heard from the first two, uh, right. so but uh, cer certainly number three. And um, you know, I mean, R Rowdy is Auburn, so. Um, and, and, uh, and, and for us as swimming fans, you know, Rowdy is swimming, you know, so, and, and I, I'm excited for uh, a couple months from now to, to, to be listening to him. Yeah. And hopefully he's excited to be calling, you know, more exciting races for Auburn going into the future. And, you know, since being a swimmer at Auburn and helping really establish the front end of what was a dynasty um, as a swimmer went in three titles, right? When you were there? No, when I was there, yeah. 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 Um, you moved on and have just done great things on deck as a coach, first at Louisville for eight seasons, helping out uh, as they built foundation for a great program, and then on to Houston where you won four conference, five conference titles there at Houston and just great success all the way through. How much time did you have to pay attention to what was happening with your alma mater in Auburn over that stretch? Uh, sure. You know, I mean, and, and I appreciate the kind words, but I don't know if, um, I would say that, that I helped to build it. I, I happened to be there um, at, at a really fun time. Um, you know, obviously we had, um, you know, phenomenal coaching staff that, that was there um, and, and, and what, what Coach Marsh was able to do in terms of, of actually, you know, building that dynasty. So um, I, I just had the great benefit of, of <laughs> having to be part of that and, and, and blessed to be a part of that and, 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 and soak some of that up and and, um, and, and, and that, that really helped me, you know, kind of moving forward and taking some of that knowledge in, into some of the places that, um, you know, you had just talked about and, and um, the wonderful opportunity to spend eight years there um, in, in Louisville with, with Coach Arthur and, and that staff and, um, and then down here for, for the last six years. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think from a coaching standpoint and, and you know, this gear, we, we kind of get uh, laser focused on, on what's happening within our own programs. Um, so, um, you know, obviously we're knowledgeable. I mean, you have to be, especially in collegiate swimming, knowledgeable of what's going on elsewhere. Um, but, uh, but my main focus has always been on, on being where my feet are and in the program that we have. Um, and, and certainly as you allude to, I mean, it's, it's, you know, over the last, you know, 15 years, not that, you know, <laughs> like it's tough to, you know, be stringing off national championships, you know, one after a row. And so um, it's been a little bit, but, um, and, and we recognize that. And, you know, so, so in terms of following and my knowledge of that, that's, that's kind of where it lays. In interesting place to be because, you know, with your history as part of, you know, the, the dynasty and you're right, you're just, you're there, but I think you should give most of the athletes that were a part of that some credit towards building the dynasty because the athletes are definitely the ones who are doing that. Um, and I, with that as a background, how do you look at this opportunity now? Because let's be honest, most of those kids don't remember <laughs> the heyday of Auburn. The kids you're recruiting these days yeah. just don't remember those days and, and how that was built and how awesome um, earning all of those SEC titles on your pool deck and everything else were. How much do you balance the old tradition and appreciation for the fact that this is a historic swimming program and looking forward knowing that you need to create something new that can adapt to the current generation in the current time. Well, I mean, yeah, you, and, and especially now as we're, um, and I appreciate it, I mean, appreciate the question because it's, um, it's intriguing, you know, in, in terms of recruiting, from a recruiting standpoint, now we're recruiting, you know, 15, 16 year old kids um, and, and their, their um, I'll say knowledge level because I mean, they're smart and knowledgeable, but their uh, frame of reference um, you know, that they weren't born <laughs> yet when I, you know, when, when I happen to be an, an athlete at Auburn. And so, uh, their frame of reference of, of high level swimming or, uh, paying attention to, 
uh, what's going on at the NCA level, um, you know, for, for some may begin at, at 10, 11, 12. Uh, for, for the ones that really begin to get good um, and, and serious about it, maybe not even until their high school at, at 14, 15. Um, and, and so you're talking about one to two years of, of maybe some knowledge base before they begin the recruiting process. So um, I, I won't get into my own personal opinions on, on recruiting um, you know, kids at that young of an age. I think it's, um, it's difficult at best for, for a 16 year old um, you know, junior in high school to be making decisions, um, in, in, you know, two years before where they're going to be going. Um, but, um, but I think as we talk to, um, recruits about, um, where it is that, that we're going and, and how we move into the future, the big thing I want them to, to let them know and understand is, yes, there, this, there is a, a program here that is rich in, in history and tradition. Um, and, and you can see that when you come to campus and, and walk on the pool deck and, um, and, and you can experience that, um, you know, through, through our alumni base. And, uh, but, but, um, and, and we have a great opportunity to use that certainly to our advantage um, and, and help them to understand that as we move forward in the future, we have a great opportunity to tap, to tap into that knowledge base, tap into the connection from our alumni base from a recruiting standpoint um, of certainly how those things were able to be done at that point in time um, and, and how we can, um, like you say, adapt and, and shift that um, as, as we try to move forward into, um, say, get back to where, you know, the, the program was. But I mean, because at this point right now, we're, we're trying to move move up the ladder and, and from a conference and SEC standpoint and and, um, and, and move back up the ladder um, for, from an NCA standpoint. And um, in, in the conversations I have with the, the team on Monday, just, you know, finally being on campus, um, we have those people, you know, I mean, from the, the talent standpoint, the ability standpoint, and more importantly, the, the, the desire standpoint. Um, that, that currently exists to, to be able to, to begin to make that move forward. It's, it's definitely a level of talent that, you know, a program like Auburn attracts. What are some of, you know, you talked about the history as something you can tap into, even if it's something that you're just kind of referencing as a learning point for some of these younger kids. What else are you able to, like, sell as as you're recruiting to Auburn that really has you know it's another card to play it's another thing that you can use that when you're trying to convince a kid that this is the best place you know to spend there four years well and, and I'll tell you it, it's um <laughs> yeah to, to, to walk on campus on on uh, uh get back to campus I, and I hadn't been there in about six years and I think before that it had been about six years so um you know a, a lot has changed but um, the one thing that hasn't changed is you know the second I walked on campus for a recruiting visit uh, when I when I was 17 years old, um, you know, you, you get wow. You know, you say this is this is an amazing town. It's an amazing university. It's an amazing place. There's something in the air. Um, you feel it. Um, you know, and, and it's a beautiful place to to live and study and, and have the opportunity to train. Um, that has only um, increased over the last 20 years. Um, when you look at in terms of facilities and resources, and obviously um, the, the landscape of collegiate af- athletics has changed significantly over the last 20 years. Um, just the, 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 the level of resource ability that we have, uh, w- w- you know, being in, in the SEC um, and, and being, um, you know, a, a top tier university um, and an athletic department in the country. So um, the, the things that we have available to us, um, you know, that from a resource standpoint, it, it, but it, and it's good to have that stuff. You know, it's, it's fun. It's appreciative that, you know, they get lots of gear. That's great. Um, you know, we've got a beautiful pool. We've got a phenomenal outdoor pool, which, um, I, you know, I, I think I've only seen once. Um, that, that was just a pipe dream when I was there um, uh, swimming. Um, so we have all those things available, but we have to be able to utilize those things. Um, and, and that's the big, um, I don't say challenge in it. That's, that's like, how, how can we best allow our student athletes to thrive with all, the, all that we have available to them? So um, I don't know if that, if that answers you, but... No, the facilities are pretty amazing. I hope that they've cleaned up the deck since the last time I saw that outdoor pool. But um, <laughs> speaking of, well, let's talk first. Are there obstacles to recruiting to Auburn? Is there anything that makes it hard to get kids to come down to Auburn? Well, I, th- I think everywhere you go has different, um, you have to play to your strengths, right? You know, every different, um, you know, program I've been involved with um, has different things that, that uh, you know, are really positives and, and, and things that, that are really beneficial to recruit to and, and everywhere has uh, different headwinds and, and it's different for every university, different campus, um, you know, different department. Um, you know, so I, I think one of the, one of the um, you know, I'll say obstacle, but something that's very different than, than during my own time there 
um, is is the cost, but that's that's the same in you know that's that's higher education right now. Uh, so that's an obstacle for everybody you know out there in the country. It's 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 a little bit different, um, you know, in terms of of um, you know kind of out of pocket cost. But again, that that's not something that I think is unique to Auburn. Um, that's that's unique to um, anywhere you're going to go right now in terms of higher education. So um, I, you know I don't see a lot of drawback. You know, there's not to me obstacles that um, you know, are not, are not overcomeable. Um, so, um, and I, you know, we, we are surrounded by a couple states that, that have great lottery system and, and, and financial aid systems, um, you know, that, uh, that, that Alabama may not have it at the same level, uh, in the state of Alabama as, as some some other states within our league, um, which just means I think you got to thread the needle a little bit more in terms of, um, you know, where, where you're placing financial aid and, um, and, and, and that plays a little bit from a depth standpoint. Uh, but, but, but other than that, I don't see, I mean, there, there's not much of a headwind, you know, I, yeah. that, that I can, that I can surmise right now. I mean, but, but you're talking about day four and, um, you know, so that's, uh, well, it's good. You got to be optimistic and to be in a place where you feel like there's not anybody in the country that you can't recruit. I mean, in some ways, obviously there's, but that's, that's a pretty cool place to be on day four. And I yeah. kind of want to just spend the rest of the time, if you don't mind, kind of talking about how you set that up. Cause it's a challenge and you're taking on a lot more work now with a you know, men's program too and a and women's program and um, how you divide that work and hire your staff and figure out how to make that culture work. You know, that's, it's tough to do. Not a lot of success in combined cultures since Auburn and Arizona back in the day. I might be missing some, so I'm not statistically up to date on that, but it's still a challenge whether it's, you know, doable or not. It's going to be a challenge to figure out that culture do you have any insight or, or can you give us any insight on in how you plan to kind of tackle that? Sure. And, and I mean, maybe, maybe not so much success as, as you know, that as you go back to Auburn and Arizona, because I think, you know, those two happen to win both sides in the same of the year, you know, Auburn a couple of times and, and Arizona once, but I mean, <laughs> I think it's pretty good if you got two teams in the top 15, I don't know, you know, so, so and, and that's happened a lot, you know, so right. but, that shouldn't be that shouldn't be the standard. I don't know why we're like, well, nobody's won both from a pro combined program for this long. Who yeah, who cares one? No, but 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 you're right. That that becomes a cultural thing. I mean, seeking excellence in, on both sides of um, you know, within both genders becomes an excellence thing and uh, a culture thing. Um but yeah, I mean, to to me, it, I don't I don't see it necessarily as much more work. I mean, that's that's a conversation I have with my, with my wife quite a bit over the last a uh, week and a half. It's, she's like, well, there's only so many hours. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, but 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 I think the, the the big thing that maybe you allude to is is the the, the number of people involved uh, within the organization is is large, you know. And, and so you're talking about, um, you know, when, when you pick up and move the entirety of of the group, you're you're talking about you know a staff, you know, five, six, seven people in terms of coaches and, and graduate assistants and, and volunteers. Um, you're talking you know 30, 35 athletes on on each side. So you're looking at an organization of 75, 80 people, um, and 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 how do you have the opportunity to, um, you know, uh, have your um, have your fingers on the pulse of, of each and every one of those persons and people? And and to me, that's making sure, like you alluded to, is, um, you know, having a great staff, and and you know, we're we're in the middle part of that process, um, you know, and 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 I think some of those things will begin to to, to be at least public um, toward towards the end of next week. Um, so, so that's, that's starting and that's beginning. Um, but, um, you know, in terms of, of how, how do you get both teams moving in the same direction at the same time? Um, I, you know, to, to me, that's about creating culture, creating a family type culture and, and understanding of what it is that, that we're here to do. And, and, I, and I think that exists currently where we have right now, like I said, and, and, and having the opportunity to meet with the kids, uh, on Monday and, and I'm headed, uh, you know, to, to begin to start to have a couple more meetings. Uh, on a more individual base with with our current team um, start starting this coming Monday um, you know I'm kind of in a listening phase right now like okay let's let's see where we are you know and, and that's the big thing you know in talking with not only our, you know the current student athletes but but uh, you know in, incoming freshmen and um, and then other recruits is I want to understand where you are right now and and let's let's meet you there um, and and understand where it is that, that you really want to go with this from from a swimming standpoint from a spiritual standpoint from an academic standpoint and then, then how can we, how can I as a coach, how can we as a staff really help to move you on an individual level to where it is that you want to go um, in, the, in the context of, of our group and our team um, and, and, and where our team wants to go. So 
um, that's kind of where I'm, I'm, I'm in the listening and, and learning phase right now. Is coaching a group yourself a priority at all for you? Sure. I mean, I, I'm going to be, I'm, I operate a little bit differently, you know, and, and I think it's, it's been fun because, um, you know, during spent time, you know, dual gender program at, at, at uh, University of Louisville and, and I, and I really, um, appreciated the, the approach that we had there, um, you know, and, and, and not so much defining, uh, separate boxes to say, okay, this, this is your box of, um, you know, you swim these events. So, so, you know, this is, this is your box and this is your coach, uh, go ahead and make it work. Um, you know, and, and so, and, and we took the same approach here at University of Houston. It's a little bit different when you're, when you're a single gender program, because, um, you, ha you have a head coach and an assistant coach and, and maybe a volunteer every now and then, um, you know, and it's like, you, you got to wear all the hats. Um, so, so that doesn't bother me, um, in, in terms of, of, um, you know, where, where I'm going to be or, or where I'm going to be coaching, but, but that's the approach that we're going to take. I think the big thing it allows us to do is um, move people in and out of, of where it is that they need to be, you know, so we're not putting you in this box from A to Z just because you, you swim the mile or just because you swim the 50 freestyle or just because you're a good tuna freestyler. Um, you know, you're not going to live in one spot. You know, you need to be floating around a little bit depending on the time of year, uh, depending on your own personal needs. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing that, that I have great, um, that to me is, is extremely advantageous um, is, is so, like, like you referenced to a little bit of historical knowledge of um, you know, what, what the Auburn swimming uh, experience was, was all about it. And it just it, something that's always re resonated pretty closely with me when it comes to the, the training aspect uh, of individual athletes, um, you know, two, two of my teammates at the time during my time there were uh, Kirstie Coventry and Margaret Holzer. And, uh, you know, at NCAAs one year, I think they were one, two in the turn of back. In, in 2008, I believe they were Olympic and uh, gold and silver medalist yep. uh, in, in the same event um, and, and swam on the same team. And, and I think in, in watching them during their time at Auburn, uh, you know, they, they trained together. Maybe I could probably count it on, on one hand. Um, you know, here's two women that, that swim the exact same event are the very two best in the world um, and yet had very specific and different needs from a training standpoint and training approaches. Um, and, and that, that's always resonated to me. It's like, okay, I don't know if we really want to define this box. We want to coach the, the individual, um, from, from a, uh, 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 from a mental and psychological side. And then we certainly want to coach the individual from the physiology, physiological side. Yeah. From the so that was clear as mud. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? So that was probably as clear as mud for you. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, it definitely helps at least lay down the foundation of what you're looking to set for some values and some systems for your coaches to operate through, which I think is, you know, a lot of managing at the level that you are. And, and you know, you gave David Marsh a lot of credit, but I think he kind of opened a lot of people's eyes to the idea that you can give up power and like help really good coaches become really good coaches by, you know, learning to manage coaches at that level. And it's, sure. you know, it's good for some people if they can recognize that, but a lot of us coaches really love getting into it for the coaching part. And, you know, there's, I, do you see a difference in coaching athletes versus managing coaches? I mean, there's, there's gotta be a difference. Yeah. Well, I, I think you can do both, uh, you know, and, and I really do. Um, you know, like I said, there, you know, I think you alluded to, to, to coach March and his, and his management skills, but, um, and, and, and did a good job of empowering his staff and, and ability, but, um, uh, but don't forget the man's a, you know, he's the whisperer, man. You know, he, <laughs> I mean, you know, operates on a, on a different level, you know, in, in my opinion of genius and in, in, in making technical adjustments and um, in, in, in helping, you know, people do, um, you know, some pretty crazy things. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, the guy, I can flat out coach, you know, so I mean, I, you know, and, 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 and so um, I'm sure it's, it's an intriguing and, and um, you know, balancing aspect. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that, that I have the ability to pick up the phone and, and pick his ear on that. So. Yeah, that's true. What a huge benefit. One other question, sorry, before I let you go, and I keep thinking about it. is PK still around? Yeah, he's there. Yeah. Is he? <laughs> so, I'm going to have dinner with him this week. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's huge. That's great for you. That's great for the, the program. And uh, yeah, it, are there plans to include him as part of the, you know, the program going forward? Yeah, I'm still learning a little bit in terms of the structure of, of, of what, you know, has been in place. Um, you know, if I can, you know, I mean, it'd be crazy not to. Yeah, uh, I mean, right. the, the, the guy's forgotten more about, you know, helping elite level athletes than, than I'll ever know, um, you know, in, in terms of, of that side of the sport and, and our sports performance side. So, um, you know, you know, the knowledge that he's been able to gain, I can tell old, but the knowledge of, that he's been able to gain over decades, 
uh, to, through helping kids do that and, and, and athletes, you know, at, at the highest level um, is it, something we definitely need to and, and have to tap into. Good. I'm glad I asked because I think that's definitely the right answer. <laughs> Ryan, I appreciate your time so much. Uh, it sounds like you are, you know, although it's got to be, you know, a lot of information coming in at once. I'm glad to see you basically at home and back in the driver's seat there. Excited to see good things coming to the planes and out of the planes here in the near future. Thank you very much for your time and best of luck, Ryan. Appreciate you. Thank you very much, Garrett. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.